Hey, congratulations on installing your new electric winch on your boat trailer. But now it's not gonna work until you provide it with power. So my name's Randy and I'm gonna show you two ways to provide your winch with power. Okay, the first way I'm gonna show you is to get a dedicated battery just for powering your winch. And in that case, you're gonna have to have it installed right on your boat trailer. Now, the reasons you'd wanna do it this way is because no matter which vehicle you're towing your boat with, you always have power to your winch. Another reason is because it's running off of a battery, uh, and this takes a lot of amps to power. And uh, battery power is a DC, direct current power, and it doesn't like to travel over long distances. So the shorter you can keep the cable, the better, especially in these high uh, draw items. So in this case, you can have a very short cable running to your winch. All right, a couple reasons you might not want to do it this way. Probably the biggest reason is you have to buy a separate battery dedicated just to your winch, which is going to be an extra expense. The other reason is you have to keep this battery charged. So, um, you know, depending on how big your boat is and how big your winch is, you're only going to get so many pulls out of it before you're going to have to recharge it. Well, if you're kind of forgetful and don't have it charged, you could be stuck at the boat landing with a dead winch. And now the second way to wire up your winch is to hook it directly to your truck's battery. Now the reason you're going to want to do it this way is because you always have a fully charged battery ready to go to power your winch. And if you're using your winch while your truck is running, you virtually have unlimited power to power this winch. Now probably the biggest reason you don't want to do it this way is because your boat winch will only work with the vehicle that's wired to be able to power it. So you're pretty much dedicated to pulling it with the one vehicle you have wired up. And in my case, I always pull it with my truck. I've never pulled my boat with another truck. So I'm gonna do it this way. Now also keep in mind, as I was talking before, it's running off of battery power, which doesn't like to travel really over long distances. So to go all the way from the front of the truck to the back, I got 20 feet of six gauge copper wire and this wire alone costs about $50 just for this. So you do have the expense there. Well, I previously had my old truck wired up from my boat winch, but now I got a new truck. So I'm gonna wire this one up too, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now this is a fairly easy install. You only need a few items. You need a positive cable long enough to go from your battery to the back end of your truck. You need a negative cable. You need a circuit breaker. Uh, some terminal ends to put on your wires, and you need your quick disconnect switch. Now, I gotta say, I had this set up on my old truck, and there's a few times I got to the landing and did not have power to my winch. I have an easy tip to prevent that from ever happening to you. I'll give you that tip at the end of this video. Meanwhile, here's another tip that you might need. Um, as far as the cabling goes, you only need one long enough to go from the front to the back of the truck for the positive. The negative side, you see I only got a three foot piece here, that's because the negative of your battery is grounded to the frame of your truck. So all you need is a piece long enough to go from your quick disconnect to the frame of your truck. So three feet should be about enough to do that. And one other tip, if you go online, um, all these parts you see here can be bought online. I'll put the, all the links to them down below, but you're gonna see some, I think it's six or eight gauge wire like this online on like Amazon, it's only like $20 for, I don't know what it was, 20 or 50 feet, anyway, enough cable. Do not buy that wire. That is an aluminum wire they pass off as, you know, being good enough to power a winch, but uh, copper, if you're doing this long run like this, you need a copper wire. Uh, aluminum just not gonna cut it, so do not buy one you find on Amazon for really cheap. Get a good quality wire. Uh, you can find it at most auto parts stores, or I actually found this one at Lowe's, your home you know, depots, box stores, that stuff like that. Uh, it was actually cheaper at Lowe's than it was at the uh, auto parts store. I went to Napa and it was about two or three times the price. So, all right, here's a close up of the circuit breaker. You see, if you just unscrew the end caps, you can undo the wire and put a new wire in there. And also, it has a little button here you can reset the circuit breaker, put it back like that. All right, taking a look at the inside of my truck, here's the positive battery terminal. Pull off the cover there, and I'll put uh, one end around that nut, and then I'll fall it down. Looks like you can see, kind of see daylight down there. So, looks like there's a clear path to 
just tie strap the wire down, down near the frame, and then we'll just run it back along the frame. All right, change this out. Let's undo this little screw here. That pulls right out. All right, stripped off the end of the new wire here. Put your little cap on, little rubber grommet thing. And then just put it right in the end of there. And we just tighten up this screw. That was good. And then all you just screw the cap on. There, we got our new wire hooked into it. <laughs> all right, got my cable here. Now just find that little hole down there. It'll get you down to the bottom of the truck and just feed it down on through. All right, we'll just feed all the way down and we'll go underneath the frame there and tie it along there. But you just want to make sure, try to keep the wire away from any like really hot spots, the uh, exhaust manifolds, um, any moving parts that could harm the wire. So once I get this hooked up, I'll kind of use zip ties to kind of keep it away from all that stuff. Here's our circuit breaker, make sure that's accessible. And we'll just hook it onto the positive nut here. Take that off, it should slide right over that. Screw it back down. Now my truck has this particular little cap here, so I want to make sure the wire follows along enough that I can snap this back on. There. That looks pretty good. Then I'll just strap it along all these other wires here to keep it out of the way. Now we're taking a look underneath the vehicle. That's where it's coming out from where the engine is. I'll strap it up to a few better spots there. Actually just went right through the frame here. Came out there. And then uh, there are some other wires running right up here along the inside of the frame. So I'm gonna take this and just run it all the way along the length of the frame until I get to the back. All right, we got our wire all the way to the back of the truck. And now we just gotta put our little quick disconnect here. And in my case, I'm thinking I'm gonna just screw it right to the bottom, right next to the hitch here, kind of through the hard plastic part of this bumper. Uh, you know, you can put it up higher if you want, but it's a brand new truck. I don't wanna really drill holes in the, up high in the bump here. So uh, there's a couple of little small holes here, right there and there. You just put a bolt up through. So screw up through there, bolt it on, should hold it nice and tight. And then our other connector, when we're ready for it, we just come and just slide it on. All right, first we gotta put the end pieces on so we can slide this on to our quick connect. All right, now I just grabbed one of the connectors that came with those quick disconnects, slide it on the end, and then we'll crimp it on. I was gonna put some heat shrink over this, but realized uh, I just didn't have the right size, so I'm gonna just put some black tape, kinda cover up that little gap there. There's no insulation. And another quick tip here, always leave yourself some extra wire. So you can see it's a little long. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coil this up, tie it up back there. In that case, if I ever have to cut this off or redo this, you got extra wire to play with. All right, now to hook up the negative wire. So this is just a little short one here. So this one will go to the quick connect and then this end just find a place somewhere on the frame here to ground it up. All right, if you look right up there, there's actually a factory grounding spot. I just uh, took that off and added my grown wire to it. All right, now we got our two ends hooked up. I put the other end on the negative, got the quick connect, and we just slide it in. They are marked positive and negative, so make sure you get them on the right side. Should go and hit a little stop. There it is, kind of hear a little click, and then it's in there. And the same with the other side. There is an up and down to these, so you gotta make sure they Little ends are facing the right direction when you put them in. This one is ready to go. Now we just gotta screw it up to the bottom here. Now to attach this, I'm just gonna drill two little holes right where I want it. Gonna keep it a little bit away from the hitch, but not too far off to the side. Ah, that is metal. It's just a plastic coated metal. 
All right, ready to bolt it up. And what I did, um, instead of having it sit directly flush to here, which would probably work, I put a little like one inch, one inch eighth, uh, one eighth inch spacer uh, underneath it here. It's just a piece of plastic I had off of a broken footstool. I just took a piece of that plastic, cut it with a hacksaw, drilled a couple holes in it. So now it'll just make it sit out, protrude out just a little bit so it's easier to plug in. And then you just kind of twist your cables around the way you want them and bolt it up. All right, I got it screwed up there. And of course, they got these little end caps here. A little loop there, you gotta put this through the wire first. Forgot to do that. But I think we can reverse this. There's these little tabs in here you just push up. And just, yep. And you can pull these cables back out. There we go. No big deal. Throw this on. And shove them back in. Make sure they're the right one. Yeah. There's basically just a little metal tab in there that clicks it in place and you just move that and it works fine. I'll give you a close up look. All right, here's a close up look. Kind of see it's got a little bit of space there so this can just, you know, connect right on. And then here's the cap. That'll keep it nice and clean. Shove that on like that. All right, now I'm just gonna tie strap this up right there and we'll call that done. Okay, we're back here at the boat. Next thing you're gonna need is a jumper wire to run from your truck to the winch. And my winch, I got a strong arm. Uh, I think it's 4,000, it's TW4000. Um, and the little connector on it's identical to the one I just put on my truck. So this works good. Um, so when you buy these connectors, get a two extra so you can make a jumper that's long enough to go from your truck to the winch. All right, let's plug it in, see if that works. All right. Plug the one in there. Oop, oh, plug the other end in the end of the winch. Okay. All right, moment of truth. Hey, she works. Wait a little. Hey, works good. Well, before we go, I got that tip I promised you earlier. If your uh, connection doesn't work, you're at the boat landing, you can't get any power to it, well, there's probably a reason for that. And you ever seen a car battery over a while? It gets all that corrosion around its terminals. Well, there's always a, this is connected directly to the battery, so it always has that voltage on there. And it'll end up corroding just like your car battery does. Um, so when you stick it in, you don't get a good connection. You actually have to get in there and clean out all that corrosion and, uh, make it nice and shiny again so you'll get a good connection there. Well, remember that circuit breaker I showed you? You can just push the little button and it'll undo the circuit. Well, when you're not using your truck, I suggest pushing the button, tripping your circuit breaker, that'll cut off power to the back end of your truck. Therefore, there isn't a voltage there to create that corrosion. So whenever you use your truck, or you wanna pull up your boat, just open your hood, click that circuit breaker back on and you're good to go. And then uh, when you're done fishing for the day or week or whatever, just undo it again. So you ain't always running around with that voltage on there, creating that corrosion on the end of your terminal. So my channel is all about camping and fishing. If you want to see some fishing videos, you can check out my fishing playlist right up here with all the lakes I fish. Otherwise, if you like the project videos, uh, check out this video right down here where I just put on a new boat wrap on my fishing boat. I think it looks pretty cool. So check that one out. Everyone, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.